Hello, and welcome to episode 19 of Sarastro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to complete the base set miniatures by painting Mac Esh Carre from Fantasy Flight's Star Wars Imperial Assault. Here's an overview of the steps we'll be following. We'll begin by priming the miniature with either a black or a white primer. We'll then apply the base colours along with some metallic dry brushing for the gun. We're then going to work section by section, applying a mixture of highlights and shade to create a pleasing level of contrast. Our finishing touches will include painting the eyepiece and applying a thin glaze to the surrounding areas to create a simple glowing effect. Let's begin by jumping straight in with step two. For the gun, I'm going to combine a metallic dry brush with some additional manual highlights later on, as we did for Fen Cygnus in episode 18. So I'm going to begin by applying a dark grey mix of black and a Mechanicus standard grey. I'm then going to give it a good dry brush with some lead belcher, which we'll be dulling down later with some null oil. I'm switching to a smaller flat brush to get into the harder to reach areas. With that done, we can now paint the other black areas of the miniature, which includes the gloves, belt, ammo pouches, harness, knee pads and boots. We don't need to be especially neat here, as we've yet to paint the surrounding areas, so we can more or less cover the entire bottom half of the miniature. For the green bodysuit, I'm providing a base coat of warg flesh, although other colours, such as Caliban Green, would also be fine. We can also paint the lens of the eyepiece with this, and I'm painting the rest with a small hit of the dark grey. I'm going to give the skin and fur a base coat of Rakarth flesh. I've also chosen to paint the hair tie with the warg flesh. And finally, I'm picking out the various buckles with some lead belcher. As usual, I like to retouch as I go along. Now we're ready for some highlights and shades. I'm going to begin by highlighting the skin and fur, and we'll start with a roughly equal mix of the original base tone, Rakarth Flesh, and some Flayed One Flesh. This is going to cover most of the fur, except for places like the gaps between the fingers, the roots of the hair, and the creases that define the facial details. The reason I've chosen to paint the highlights before adding the shade is because we can more easily use the shade to help articulate the furry texture than we could by using highlights. We could also use a dry brush, but for such a small area, I felt that shading down rather than dry brushing up would give us more control over the gradation of dark to light. Next, I'm going to use some pure Flayed One's Flesh. This is still going to cover the main flat areas, such as the surface of the arms and the top of the head.
As this gives us a more noticeable step up in lightness, I'm going to work with a little more care around the face. I don't usually wait too long between layers, and I'm happy to work pretty continuously around the figure whilst highlighting in thin layers like this. I'm also adding extra emphasis to places like the cheekbones, brow and tips of the ears, ensuring that I've really maxed out the highlight with two or three layers before lightening the tone. I'm now going to lighten the flayed one's flesh with the addition of some white, and I'm really focusing on the topmost areas of the skin. One more portion of white mixed in gives me my lightest highlight, which I'm using to emphasize the most raised details, especially around the face. We don't need to worry too much about over-highlighting at this stage, as we can do as much toning down as we like with the shade we'll be applying in a moment. I'm now going to create a shade using equal parts of Nuln Oil and Agrax Earthshade, along with just a hint of Drukii Violet, and I'll be thinning this with a good portion of Lamian Medium. I'm then using this to shade the area down, giving us some depth, but also helping to bring out some of the texture of the hair and fur. We can apply this first layer quite liberally, although I'm leaving the brightest areas, such as the very top of the head, untouched. Because we have thinned the shade with some medium, this mix is now performing the function of both a wash and a glaze. We want it to collect in the recesses, creating some depth like a wash, but we also want it to settle across the surface, allowing us to subtly tint and darken those areas. For the forearms, for example, I'm using the mix to gently darken the undersides, whilst removing excess from the topmost surface. We should give a few minutes to allow our first layer to dry before applying the second. Now I might be a little more focused in my application, concentrating more on the creases or areas we want to be darkened the most. A bit like the way we highlight, except in reverse. We can build up the depth of tone using up to three or four layers of this. Here we can see how effectively this approach renders the subtle furry textures.
Next, I'm going to provide a neat wash of Celia Green Shade for the green bodysuit. And now we can shade all of the black areas, including the gun, with some Nuln Oil. Next we're going to highlight the green bodysuit, and these are the three tones I've selected that most easily give us the closest match to the character art. Alternative colours, such as Lauren Forest for example, would also be fine however. I'm going to begin with a reapplication of the base tone, Warg Flesh, covering most of the green areas except for the deepest creases and recesses. I'm then lightening the tone by mixing in an equal quantity of Warboss Green. And now I'm using some pure Warboss Green. For flat areas like this leg armour, I might create a gentle gradient just to add some tonal interest. As always, patiently applying multiple thin layers is the way to achieve a strong tone and smooth transitions. Next, I'm going to mix in some Skarsnik Green to lighten the tone in a couple of stages, which I'm using to create some smaller, more focused highlights within those already covered. and I'm now using some pure Skarsnik Green for the smallest highlights. This now looks pretty good, but because we want to give the impression that the eyepiece is giving off a yellow-green light, I'm going to mix in some Flash Kits Yellow to add some additional highlights just to the right arm and collar.
and then adding a little white to create my final brightest highlight for these areas. Before leaving the green areas, I've chosen to do a little further manipulation of the contrast and smooth out some of the transitions with a thin glaze, made of Celia green shade mixed with some medium. Applied selectively, this allows me to add a little extra depth where necessary. For the black areas, I'm going to begin highlighting with some Eshin Grey. Because there's quite a lot of black on the miniature, I'm going to highlight in a few more stages than I might usually do. For the next couple of highlights, I'm mixing in increasing quantities of Administratum Grey. For the brightest highlight, I'm using pure Administratum Grey. If the highlights end up looking a little too grey and overexposed, we can always use a black glaze to tone it down and bring back a little depth. I'm also going to create a very thin purple glaze using some demonette hide. This is to gently introduce a purple tint to the knee pads, as can be seen in the character art. Because I quite like the way this complements the green, I've also decided to use it on the boots. I'm now going to highlight the gun, and to help differentiate it from all of the other black areas, 
I'm creating a unique mixture of iron breaker mixed with some carrack stone in a roughly 2 to 1 ratio. This helps preserve the slightly tarnished metallic look of the weapon. I've decided here that I'm unhappy with the moulding on the top of the scope, so I'm using a craft knife to shave it back creating a smooth texture. It's never too late to make adjustments like this. Final gun highlight, I'm mixing in a little white. We're now ready to add some finishing touches. Now we're going to paint the eyepiece. As this is the unique focal point of the miniature, it's worth spending a little extra time on. I'm going to begin by giving it a coat of moot green. We then want to create some kind of gradient, and I've chosen to fade from dark up the top of the lens to light at the bottom. You could just as easily fade from light to dark, or create your gradient going from left to right if you wish. To start the gradient off, I'm going to mix some flash gets yellow into the moot green, and paint the lower half of the lens. Because I've only added a small amount, we can barely see the difference. And now I'm adding some additional yellow and applying my next layer. After two thin layers of this, we can begin to see the gradient taking form. We can now carry on adding additional yellow to the mix, and gently layering it on, gradually reducing the area we cover the further down the lens we go. And I've also chosen to paint the top edge with the pale tone. To prevent the hue becoming too yellow, from this point we will now be adding white to produce the next few layers. final lightest highlight should just hit the very edge of the lens. And now I'm neatening the edge with a little dark grey. Next we're going to create a greenish yellow glaze using Lamentus Yellow and a small amount of Waywatcher Green. I'm then thinning this with some Lamian Medium before coating the lens to tie the layers together. We can then apply this to the surrounding areas of the miniature, to give the appearance of light being emitted from the eyepiece, as can be seen in the character art. I would take this glaze quite far down the length of the gun too. A second layer can be added to increase the intensity the closer we get to the lens. For the uncovered left eye, I've chosen to simply paint it black. The only other remaining details are the pale lights we can see on the accessories strapped to the leg. For this, I'm making a light blue using Lotharn blue and some white, 
although most shades of blue would be fine. I've also decided to brighten some of the metalwork with a little iron breaker. Once we're happy with the look of the miniature, we can go ahead and protect it with a matte varnish. And I've chosen to apply a thinned gloss varnish for the lens and for the left eye. Once Mac is rebased, he's ready to join his fellow rebels, which completes the last miniature of the base set game of Star Wars Imperial Assault. Thank you for watching and especially if you have subscribed to the channel. Although it feels good to have finished the base set miniatures, there is no shortage of exciting expansion figures that I'm looking forward to covering in future episodes. To keep up to date with what I'm working on next, you can connect with me on Facebook or Twitter, or visit my newly created website at sarastro.com. My sincerest thanks must go to the patrons whose loyalty and support is helping me to turn this work into a full-time occupation. Quite soon, you will notice a doubling of my output, as the income from Patreon begins to replace that of my current day job. Stay tuned as we continue painting miniatures from the expansions to Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!